Motown ready for World Series game number one here in 2006. Representing the National League, the St. Louis Cardinals, and representing the AL, the Detroit Tigers. It is a chilly night here in Detroit. It could be a lot colder, but it is anything but toasty. 52 degrees at the start. It will drop as we go. Here's the lineup for Tony La Russa. X9 Duncan is the DH with Pujols sitting in the number three spot. Then Edmonds, Roland, and Carnacion. Ronnie Belliard, Yadier Molina, and so Taguchi he is in left field, and that's the starting lineup for the Cardinals, and it's brought to you by Bank of America. Here is the young rookie right-hander, probably the American League Rookie of the Year, Justin Verlander, and his belly's got to be bouncing. He's got to be a little nervous out there tonight, making a World Series start in Game 1. I thought the interesting thing when we met with Jim Leland, uh, Jim saying, he hopes it's warm enough for Verlander's curveball to be working tonight. Excellent fastball change up, but his curveball is second best pitch. Take a look at how the Tigers cover the field. State Farm covers the field, and so do the Tigers as a group during the regular season. Ninth in the AL in fielding percentage, 106 errors. They've made only two during the postseason. And Yvonne Rodriguez, the 11-time Gold Glove Award winner, anchors this team and is probably their leader behind the plate. The World Series is brought to you by Budweiser Select, brewed longer for a bold taste that finishes clean. Expect everything. What should we expect out of this World Series? Man, the flashball popping around from America Park. And the first pitch is strike to David Eckstein. All 5'7", 165 pounds of David Eckstein waiting for an 0-1. One. one ball, one strike. Eckstein, Duncan, Pujols, if anybody gets on, Edmonds here in the first inning. Time called at the plate. David Eckstein so far this postseason, 8 out of 41. Tony La Russa has called him fearless. To flop his body around night after night at the big league level year after year and do what he does leaning into pitches and getting into collisions out at second base turning double plays and laying out to catch ground balls his body takes a beating but he answers the bell every day for La Russa. a one two good breaking ball drops low well that thing Nasty, two That's and two. A, well, the reason Jim Leland uh, was talking about the curveball is when it's cold weather, the curveball does not break as sharply as it does in warm weather. Another one. It drops low again, and the count's now full. So the early questions for Verlander, what kind of feel will he have for that curveball? Will he get the high strike call and that good fastball from Randy Marsh? Stein grounds it foul and on top of that Tim we talked to the Russo before this game he has impressed upon his hitters to lay off high delivery something they did not do in the NLCS against the Mets. Scott Rowland comes to mind a guy who fouled off and made outs on high fastballs to get it down in the zone. That is Santiago to his left one away. Get tonight's MasterCard keys to the game. Well, if, the, if you tell the, told the St. Louis Cardinals, I mean, obviously they want to win two games, but if, if they go back to St. Louis with one win, they would be very happy. And for the Detroit Tigers is the week of rest, and they clinched last Saturday against the Oakland Athletics. So it is the week of rest. Uh, is it going to hurt them? Doesn't look like it's going to hurt them so far from the looks of Verlander. Duncan way out in front. 0-1 and, and now 0-2. Chris Duncan, the rookie. It's rookie on rookie here with one out and nobody on at the top of the first inning. And Verlander is working in a hurry. Breaking ball missing. Well, this Detroit team has had six full days of rest, as Tim talked about. They clinched on Saturday against Oakland. The last six teams with at least five days of rest have all won. 
and World Series play and that missed inside two and two the crowd wanted strikeout number one for Verlander. The two two. Full count again. I haven't seen a pitcher work this fast all year. Not the American League in particular. A league known for slow working pitchers. Duncan grounds it to the right side for Polanco. Two up. Take a look at the scouting report on Justin Verlander, the hard throwing Virginia right hander. Only a second professional year, an excellent changeup. And that third point, will his curveball, because of the 52 degree weather, be breaking like it does in warmer weather? Here's some good news for you. There's some rain moving into the area, we understand. And tomorrow it's supposed to rain and might snow by tomorrow night. Ah, jingle bells. First pitch strike to Albert Pujols, who had only one RBI during the NLCS. Yet his team, the guys around him, pushed on through the Mets. We were there two nights ago in that thrilling game seven. A three to one St. Louis Cardinal win. Here's a one one. Outside two and one the Cardinals have been pretty patient. Here were their first three hitters. Two out nobody on Albert Pujols the reigning MVP in the National League takes a strike on the outside corner. Jim Leland telling us that he has preached to his pitchers to pitch Albert Pujols every pitch like it was a no ball and two strike count. That's a hook. Take a look at the lineup for the Tigers. A little different look. They've got Granderson up in the leadoff spot. Then Monroe is hitting second. Had been down at the bottom of the lineup for Jim Leland. Polanco still hitting third. Ordonez is in right field. Guillen is at first. Ivan Rodriguez, the catcher. DH is Sean Casey, Brandon Inge at third, and Ramon Santiago is the shortstop. And that Tiger lineup brought to you by Bank of America. And this rookie for the Cardinals is just a five-game winner with a big ERA of over five getting the nod here in game one. That is the fewest games that a pitcher has won to start a World Series in the history of the World Series. Granderson first up he takes a strike from Reyes Curtis struck out 174 times during the regular season that was the most in the American League but it's been a different story in the postseason He's in the hole here 0 and 2 he struck out only three times against the pitching of New York and Oakland and he walked four times and he hit three home runs has to patrol a huge center field here in this stadium. That's high ball one. How about that? 420 to straight away and a lot of room in right center field. One two pitch. Granderson chops it to Pools. And there's one down in the bottom of the first. State Farm covers the field. A look at how the Cardinals cover the field defensively. In the outfield, it's Sotaguchi making his first start of the postseason. Edmonds in center, and Carnacion is in right. And then it's Roland, Eckstein, Belliard, and Pujols. And this World Series will feature two of the best throwing catchers in the game between Ivan Rodriguez and the younger Yadier Molina. It was the hitting star from game seven in the NLCS for the Cardinals two nights ago with a game winning home run. First pitch strike to Craig Monroe who hit 28 home runs during the regular season. Probably the best all around athlete the most tools in this Detroit lineup as he takes inside one and one on deck is Polanco. A 1-1 from Reyes. 
Caught off, foul back, strike two. Tony La Russa said, Tim, that, you know, he made the final start of the year, the last day against Milwaukee. He was not on the roster for the division series. He did make a game four start in the NLCS, and he thinks he'll be a little better than that because of the experience here tonight getting the World Series. As Monroe hits it fair, down the third baseline into left, and Monroe will have a double with one out. When Anthony Reyes started in the National League Championship Series, he went four innings, and he featured the straight change we thought too much. And he comes in with a straight change to Craig Monroe, just fair, inside the third baseline. That's an excellent pitch, but you can't go to that well too often in early innings because hitters are, their timing is a lot different. You haven't faced them. So the changeup got Granderson, but Monroe with the changeup doubles with one out. And now Polanco, runner at second, one away. A chance for Detroit to jump out in front. And a strike on the inside corner. Polanco, the former Cardinal, came up with St. Louis in 98, was there until 2002 when Walt Jockety packaged him up, sent him on to Philadelphia in the Scott Rowland deal. He's the MVP of the ALCS. Deal one. Little flare, shallow center field. Out is Belliard for the catch, two down. Take a look at the scouting report on Anthony Reyes, who is a teammate of Mark Pryor of the Chicago Cubs at the University of Southern California. Four-seam fastball. That's the one that goes up. It's the faster of the fastballs. He's working on that two-seamer and using his changeup more than he's ever used. The first word in that second point is a word that would describe Anthony Reyes, period, developing. He is yeah. a young yeah. right-hander just getting his feet wet at the big league level, and here he is in game one of the World Series. Missing high to Maglio Ordonez. When he last was at the plate, when it counted, he hit the walk-off home run to help the Tigers sweep the ALCS over Oakland. 1-0. Molina somehow keeps it out of the plate. It looked like this. There were reports in the paper here that he used Carlos Guillen's bat when he hit that home run. I asked Maglu about that before the game. He said, no, he did not. But he uses it often. I said, anybody else's bat? He said, no, just his best friend, Carlos Guillen. Well, that particular bat he can't use anymore. It went off to Cooperstown. Runner at second, two out. A 2 0 pitch. Ian on deck. Series ending home runs in LCS history. He's on this list with Aaron Boone. Chris Shambliss doing it against Kansas City back in 1976. Did it against the Red Sox. Here's a 3-0. Or Donez takes a strike. Talked to Dave Duncan prior to tonight's game. He thought Reyes would be nervous here in the early going, but believes he could get through some innings. As Tim mentioned, he went four in that game four start and he allowed two runs on two home runs just three hits but he did walk four that was the issue his control against the Mets 12 5 win for New York guy in the middle there Weaver won game five and the former Tiger will start game two tomorrow night here comes a 3 1. Full count.
How can that bat boy look so tired? It's the first inning of <laughs> game one. Runner at second, two out, three balls, two strikes. And a walk. A double, a walk. And now a guy who, when you start asking around in the Tiger Clubhouse, who they would expect to have a great World Series and might, if the Tigers end up winning this, be an MVP candidate, this is the guy that most point to. Yeah, he had a, a good division series against the Yankees, but only three for 16 against the Athletics. But he is their clutch player. Jim Leland calls him the smartest player on his roster. By the way, no thought of pitching around Ordonez to get to Guillen. Guillen, too good a clutch hitter, just walking. Two on with two out. <laughs> All in one. You can look at the numbers and you start to realize that's what he's done this season, hitting 367 the postseason but here's a guy who came here in 04 and since has the highest average among big league shortstop and you know the names that are on that list like Jeter and Tejada and right on down the list Guillen has the best average of them all tonight because of the injury to Sean Casey he's playing first base down and in one ball one strike Casey with a little tear in his left calf during the ALCS out in Oakland. He's DHing tonight. He says he feels great. And when this series goes to St. Louis, Casey will be in the lineup as the first baseman unless something unforeseen happens here in the first two games. Normally, when a catcher goes out to the mound, he's out there to try to talk about a pitcher's confidence or to try not to talk too much about mechanics. But when a shortstop joins that twosome. Normally, it's about changing a sign. And I doubt that, you know, Craig Monroe has been out there long enough to get any sign from Anthony Reyes. And the reason we bring that up is that Reyes, uh, when he started, went from the windup to the stretch because he thought that the Mets were getting his signs. And here comes Molina again to talk to Anthony Reyes. I thought she couldn't call back-to-back -back timeouts. Is that just the NFL? If, if the catcher goes to the mound twice, the pitcher should have to leave the game. <laughs> Same as the manager rule. What, what could have changed right now? I don't know. That's the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to get your pitcher thinking so much that it takes away from the way he's releasing the ball home. One ball, one strike. Guillen trying to put the Tigers on top. That's why. Yeah, it's worth bringing up about him tipping his pitches, and he was. The Cardinals saw him tipping his pitches. The Mets saw him tipping his pitches. So he went to the stretch in that game four start in the NLCS. But I would imagine you start getting that bouncing around oh, in yeah. your head, and you start worrying about that, you forget the pitch. That's You really messed up then. Here's a 2-1. Into right field, that's going to drop for a hit. The Tigers take the lead. Encarnacion makes an error, throws towards second late, and it's one to nothing Tigers. Greg Monroe scores a run after doubling off a changeup. Carlos Guillen. A single and a second base on a changeup. So the changeup has hurt Reyes here in the first inning. Good start for Detroit. A one out double, a two out walk. The hit by Guillen, the error out in right by Encarnacion. The RBI for Carlos Guillen. And now Yvonne Rodriguez steps in. Misses for ball one. Yvonne Rodriguez hasn't hit much this postseason, but realized in his postseason career 
He's a 406 hitter with runners in scoring position. That is the sixth best total all time. He has runners in second and third, two out. A 1 0 pitch. A little flare caught by Belliard, and the inning is over. However, the Tigers are on top. RBI by Guillen. Two left in the inning, and after one, in game one, one to nothing, Tigers. Verlander had a quick first inning, and the Tigers are doing tonight what they've done this entire postseason. They've outscored the opponents. First couple of innings, 11 to 3, and they dominated their opposition during the regular season. Edmonds goes after the first pitch. Strike one. The reason that that graphic is so important is when you dominate the early innings, you give your pitchers a chance to relax, particularly a guy in only his second professional season like Verlander. Verlander was the second overall pick in 04 from Old Dominion. One ball, one strike. Dave Duncan and Anthony Reyes, the pitching coach for the Cardinals, and tonight's starting pitcher trying to get together on what just transpired in the bottom of the first. Last year, first year in pro ball, Verlander went from high A ball all the way up to the big league level. 17 game winner this season, two balls, two strikes on Edmonds. He has everything working in the early going. Good fastball. Good curveball to get pool holes and a good change. TV does not do Justin Verlander justice. No. <laughs> you and I are looking at this guy live for the first time, and he really gets your attention. It's it's a relatively new phrase, electric stuff. And players have filthy is another term, electric stuff. He is uh, all of the above. The 2-2 two -two to Edmonds. Defensive swing. 17 wins by Verlander, the most by a Tiger rookie since Mark Fidrich. Won 19 games back in 1976. Mark the Bird Fidrich. What a character and a great guy. and was great for this city back in the middle 70s. Edmonds strikes out. Jim Edmonds saw everything. He saw the curveball, he saw the change, and he goes down on the high fastball out of the strike zone. That's the pitch that Tony La Russa is worried about tonight. That's the pitch he was worried about throughout the National League Championship Series, the high fastball from net pitchers, and now obviously the same thing from a more talented staff, perhaps the talent most talented staff in baseball. And nobody will be challenged more by fastballs up than this hitter, Scott Rowland. Where the first fastball missed, up. Six hits, 32 at bats during this postseason, no RBIs. And he hits one into left field, back at the track, at the wall, it's a 1-1 game. Scott Rowland gets his first home run in the postseason since 2004 when he went deep off Roger Clemens in game seven of the NLCS. High fastball right above the belt, middle of the plate. Actually, between the letters and the waist, and this is the pitch that Roland was making an out on throughout the National League Championship Series. See how he brought the hands in and hammered the inside fastball to tie it for the Cardinals. Encarnacion flies one into shallow right for Polanco. Two out for the Cardinals. Last time, not so good. Four game sweep with the hands of the Red Sox. Belliard grounds out to short, but the Cardinals have tied it. A one out home run by Scott Rowland. That had to feel good for the Cardinal third baseman. 1-1 one, one, after one and a half. The Tigers just wrapped up their 10th pennant. Last time they were in the World Series, 1984. When they beat San Diego. Alan Trammell was the MVP that year for Detroit. He was the manager fired 
last fall and now a lot of the groundwork that he laid has been built upon by Jim Leland who has turned this organization upside down in a good way in his first year here in Detroit. Sean Casey putting together a great postseason then went down in game one with that calf injury. The 0-1 from Reyes, 0-2. A team that won 71 games last year, won 95 games this year. Molina flashing the signs and the 0-2 pitch dip flow. One ball, two strikes. This Detroit organization, which dates back into the 1800s, has four world championships. 1935, 1945, 1968, they came back to beat the Cardinals. We had a three games to one lead in the, the 1984 season. A one two pitch, Casey strikes out. The first strikeout for Reyes. Kind of set the hands of the leadoff hitter here in the second. Good inside fastball, foul tipped by Sean Casey into the glove of Molina. I can just tell by the way you're talking, you want to see. If you were back there behind the plate calling pitches for Reyes, you want to see him establish that fastball. Yes, uh, that, that's the way I would go. When you come out with that change up in the early innings, to me, that's not the way to go. You establish the fastball, and then second time through the lineup, it's a different story. There's Brandon in. He flies to right. Two down. This is a big part. This is not as big a part as it once was. Tigers' first year here at Comerica was back in 2000. And the pitchers loved it, but the question was, would they ever be able to get any big-time hitters to come here as free agents because of the dimensions of this park? Well, they moved the left field fence in 25 feet in 2003. It's still big to center. It's still very deep into right center field. But left field has been made a lot easier because they moved the fence in and there were 56 home runs hit between the semi-new fence and the old fence this season. Here's a little fly ball out behind second base. X9 waits for it, has it, and Ramon Santiago pops up. We go into the third inning, a look at downtown Detroit. Pleasant night so far weather-wise, and the score, 1-1. Yadier Molina takes a strike underway in the third inning. Molina, Sotoguchi, David Eckstein. For the Cardinals, they tied it in the top of the second on a home run by Scott Rowland, which is important for a number of different reasons, not the least of which is if the Cardinals can get anybody going behind Pujols, it will be a lot more difficult for the Tigers in this series to pitch carefully to the reigning and LMVP. Yeah, be it Jim Edmonds or Scott Rowland or both of them. Here's a 1 2. We'll lean out in front of it. Well, Yadier's feet are back on the ground, saying that his home run is two run shot to beat the Mets in the top of the ninth inning on Thursday night at Shea Stadium, going around the bases, and he couldn't feel his feet touch the ground. A 1-2, up and after it. Molina hit a changeup. He told our crew after the game that he was looking changeup. And we'll see if the Tigers come after Molina with more hard stuff. He hit only 216 during the regular season. Changeup. And it misses by plenty. Two balls, two strikes. The other side of it is while the Tigers are heavily favored, this series and while they have pitched well to this point they have had the layoff and you have to still wonder what some of these young players will do 18 of the 25 players on the roster for Jim Leland are in the postseason for the first time Molina flares one into right that ball's going to fall for a hit in 
front of Maglio Ordonez, and the Cardinals put their leadoff man on for the first time tonight. After the changeup, Verlander tries to come back inside with the fastball. And Molina jammed, but dumps one in front of Maglio Ordonez. Yeah, the Cardinals have been underdogs against the San Diego Padres. They were more the underdog against the Mets, and they are most the underdog. <laughs> Sounds like a conjugation. Most underdog against the Tigers. Here's so Taguchi, a big reason why the Cardinals are here for his, in essence, game-winning home run that came in game two at Chase Stadium off Billy Wagner. His postseason has been perfect. Four for four, two home runs, four RBIs. On the outside corner, one ball, one strike. The fact that the Cardinals are such underdogs in the World Series, you get the feeling that it kind of miffs Tony La Russa. Not oh, really yeah. tonight. He did not take kindly to a writer who said Tigers in three during the World Series. And Taguchi on a hit and run throws his bat at the ball. It's a fair ball as Rodriguez picks it up, gets the out. And with Molina running like a bunt, Taguchi advances him down to second base. Had Rodriguez let this ball go, it would have gone foul. Taguchi throwing the bat at the ball, and with Rodriguez's arm, he understands that he can get the one out, and he took it. This ball would have rolled foul had he let it go foul but he opted to pick it up so he throws ball and chalk to get to Gucci and I'm sure there are people at home saying well why didn't he just let it roll foul and then the Cardinals don't have a guy in scoring position to Gucci's up with another strike in the count but there are many people who would argue the other way, saying if there's an out sitting right there, grab it, take it, and move on from there. Yeah, not only that, you can't read whether the ball is going to go foul that quickly. And if you hesitate, Taguchi's got an infield hit. Eckstein now with the RBI chance, and it counts 2-0. Oh. David grounded out to short his first time up. It's a simple compliment that he gets from his manager, Tony La Russa, but it means a lot. David Eckstein when Tony La Russa reminds him that he's a good player. And I say that because all you hear about Eckstein is he's tough. I and mean, that's all I talked about his first time up. He's tough. He's little. He's scrappy. He just gets by, but he's hard-nosed. La Russa said, yeah, he's all that, and don't forget he's a good player. He's a good hitter, and he's a good fielder. It's not just that he's kind of a novelty because he looks like he's 10 years old. Out in front of that pitch, two and two. It's almost like a left-handed pitcher is not a hard thrower that they call crafty. And he's thinking, when are you going to give me credit for being a good pitcher instead of crafty? The two-two. Breaking Ooh. ball got him, and what a pitch that was from Furlander. A knee locker from Verlander. You could see the movement in Eckstein's. When, it, when you got a hitter like that, you got him in the cradle in the curveball getting Eckstein. Not too many guys are going to hit that pitch. Now it's Duncan. Duncan, a very good fastball hitter. Rounded out to second his first time up. Runner in second, two out. And a skipper in there for ball one. If you don't know and you're just checking out the Cardinals for the first time, Chris's dad is longtime pitching coach with Tony La Russa, Dave Duncan. And with La Russa in Chicago, Oakland, and now St. Louis from his first year on in 1996. 2-0. Proud father on the right, and now a visit from the first baseman, Guillen. And he's trying to settle Verlander down because of the situation. And that is a runner at second, two out, a 2 0 count, and Pujols on deck.
2 0 to Duncan. 2 and 1. For the most part, the Tigers want, do not want first base occupied when they pitch to Pujol. Jim Leland telling us that you can't drive yourself crazy about that, that the Cardinals are a good lineup. Pujols is the best hitter. That is a fair ball down the right field line. It takes a funny bounce. Molina will score, and it's 2-1 to one St. Louis as the rookie Chris Duncan delivers with two out here in the third inning. So Verlander throws Duncan a 2-1 changeup just inside the line. Changeups have hurt both pitchers thus far. You can see that grip. When a pitcher grips that ball tightly, the slower the pitch, just inside the diving Guillen, and now there is a place to put pool holes, but the Tigers are going to pitch to him. Like it's 0-2. Come on, man! Pujols, runner at second, two out. And Albert Pujols hits one into deep right field. Back at the wall, it is gone. Two-run shot, Albert Pujols with first base open. The Tigers pitch to the MVP, and he makes Detroit pay. It's 4-1 to one St. Louis here in the third inning. Third home run this postseason. He had only one RBI the entire NLCS. He's got two here in the World Series now. So instead of pitching Pujols like it was 0-2, Verlander pitches him like it was two balls and no strikes. Tell you, Jim Leland told us before the first division game against the Yankees, Joe, that Tuesday night, that he'll be second-guessed a lot in the division series in the, in the ALCS, and he'll be second-guessed about that, too. Well, first base open. I just don't understand it because he was talking about, I'm not going to go to the point, I don't think, where if it's two out, nobody on, I'm going to put them on. But he was thinking in those terms, not yeah. runner at second, two out, Edmonds coming up in a situation where Pujols can add to a lead, and yet he gets a pitch right down the middle, and Pujols didn't miss it. First pitch, a strike to Edmonds, and now trying to bunt his way on. He's in the hole 0-2. Now, that's a bad play right there. I mean, you, you're a cleanup hitter, and with two out and nobody on, you're trying to bunt your way on. Not a good play, and that's why the third baseman, Brandon Inge, is back so far. Now Edmund strikes out for the second time tonight, but the Cardinals come up with three, capped on the two-run shot by Albert Pujols. Four to one, the Cardinals lead here in the middle of the third inning of game one. First pitch is a strike to Curtis Granderson with Monroe to follow and then Polanco here in the third inning for the Tigers and they're down three. Granderson flies it in the air to left field and back is Taguchi for out number one. Just to go back to the two run home run with two out first base open in the top of this third inning hit by Albert Pujols and we started to talk about our visit with Jim Leland and we plan on visiting with the Tiger manager in game. He said, we're going to pitch to Albert Pujols, at least going in, like the count is always 0-2, and try to make that perfect pitch. It's fouled back behind the plate and out of play off the bat of Craig Monroe. Because you obviously have to be careful, Tim, with Albert Pujols. He's the MVP for a reason. During the regular year, he hit 49 home runs. But that pitch is too good in that situation for Verlander, a 23-year-old rookie. Yeah, you can have meetings and tell 23-year-old rookies not to pitch to a hitter because he's too good a hitter, the best hitter in the game and one of the best in the history of the game. But once you get out there, you're not used to pitching guys like that. You're not used to making 0-2 pitches on guys and pitching around them. Shattered bat, that is a foul ball. So that's when a manager has to make up the or, or make the decision for the pitcher. 
I mean, if you tell a young pitcher like that to go ahead and make an 0-2 pitch on a guy like Pujols all the time, well, his, his competitive ire takes over. I mean, again, this is his second professional season. And to expect him to execute pitches like that to the great Albert Pujols is a very, very difficult assignment. So you expected the intentional walk. I did. I expected the intentional walk. I'm sure Albert expected the intentional walk. He didn't get it. And then he hits the home run into right to make it 4-1. to one. Now a 1-2 pitch to Monroe. You see Reyes start to mix in the breaking ball. More here in the third inning, and the count evens 2-2. Two and two. Tigers have won a franchise record seven straight postseason games. Lost the first division series game at New York against the Yankees, and they have been rolling ever since. Right at the shortstop, Eckstein, and that's out number two. Here's Polanco hitting one a ton down the line. It is foul. We talked about how smart Carlos Guillen is as a player. Well, this guy right here is going to be a future manager in my estimation. This guy is one of the smartest players around. He went up there looking for a pitch he could jerk. He's not a home run hitter, but he looked in and up, got it, and pulled it foul. Now the 0-1 from Reyes. This is down and away. The Tigers really missed him when on August 15th he separated his left shoulder making a diving play at Boston. He missed five weeks and this Tiger team was eight games under 500 with him out of the lineup during that stretch. Now this is overall with and without Polanco in the lineup 24 and 31 when he's not in the lineup 78 and 37 the runs per game the team average is better when he hits in the number two or number three spot. In the hole here, one ball, two strikes. And Polanco pops it up, right side, foul ball, out of play. Polanco and Pujols are the very best of friends. Tony La Russa was impressed with Placido Polanco from the moment he came to the big league level. He's one of those guys that isn't flashy with his abilities, but he can hit. He's a very good fundamental player, and he can hit just about anywhere in this lineup for Jim Leland. One ball, two strikes, two out, nobody on here in the third inning. A breaking ball is pulled foul. Polanco, a player who has made every team on which he played a better team. The Cardinals were better with him. The Phillies were better with him, and the Tigers are better with him. You might say, well, why did they trade him? Well, your needs changed. Scott Rowland had a chance to pick him up, and the Phillies had a chance to get Oogie Urbina, a short reliever, and that's why they traded him. Your needs changed. Polanco lines one to Belliard, and we go into the fourth inning of game number one. The Cardinals out in front of the Tigers, four to one. It's the fourth inning. It's Scott Rowland who homered his first time up. Two home runs in this game. One by Pools, one by Rowland. Rowland already one for one with a home run in this World Series. When the Cardinals played Boston in 04, Rowland was 0 for 15. Had a bad calf during that 04 postseason, and it got worse and worse. And by the time the Cardinals got to the World Series against Terry Francona's team, they were out of gas, and it showed. Here's the 0-1. 0-2. You could really, Tim, look at the last three swings that Scott Rowland has had in the postseason. NLCS game seven. He was robbed of the home run by Chavez. It got a base hit in front of the Molina home run of the ninth. And then tonight, goodbye. One and two. To the point where he has, in effect, pushed Detroit and impressed Detroit with a high fastball. When you do that, you make them change. Two and two. To the point where they come back with two breaking balls. We didn't see the Mets do that the whole series against Scott Rowland. They didn't have to. No, that's right. 
because he kept fighting off that high fastball, popping it up, fouling it back. Two balls, two strikes. And a breaking ball strikes out Roland. That's five strikeouts for Verlander. And let's check in for the first time tonight with Chris Myers. Hey, Joe, one of the more interesting stories in this series that neither manager wants to talk about is the unique relationship between La Russa and Leland. It goes far beyond baseball and their friendship. But Leland says here, the players are the show. I don't want to talk about it. La Russa said, I don't want to ruin our friendship and talk about it if he doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> but he did say, I wish I had a dollar for every minute we've talked over the years, I'd be a rich man. And they both, you get the impression, they talked for a few minutes before the game. They both feel richer for being friends with each other. Yeah, and it's a relationship that dates back to 1982. Tony La Russa giving Jim Leland a shot on his big league coaching staff. And then most recently, Six years, Jim Leland was a scout, Major League Baseball scout for the Cardinals while working out of home. Got the itch to come back, he said, because he watched Tony La Russa even more carefully and wanted to give it another shot. That misses down and in, and on four pitches, Encarnacion gets the first walk of this night, handed out by Verland. There's the comparison. Tony La Russa's win total, by the way, number three on the all time list behind Connie Mack and John McGraw. Each manager has won a World Series and whoever wins this World Series the manager will accomplish something and join only Sparky Anderson on the list of managers who have won a World Series in each league. Sparky doing it in 75 and 76 with Cincinnati and he was the man in charge here in Detroit back in 1984. Encarnacion back ahead of the tag by Keith. That was close. Verlander is 6'5", and not too many pitchers that are 6'5", have quick moves to first base. You have to have quick feet. And Justin, an excellent athlete. You talked about being from Virginia, going to Old Dominion. Marvelous athlete with very, very quick feet and a good move to first. Ronnie Belliard takes a strike. Talking to LaRusso before the game, he said the combination of this pitching staff, whether it's Verlander or Kenny Rogers or Bonderman or even Robertson, along with Yvonne Rodriguez, is likely to shut down our running game. And when a manager talks like that, he's talking about the stolen base game not the hit and run game. Breaking ball misses, ball one. Billy Arts let the hair go a little bit. He's taken the raids out. And he's gone with a new look here in the World Series. Lena on deck. Verlander is doing everything he can to let Encarnacion who stole a whopping six bases during the regular season know that he is paying attention to him and there's some hair for you Elliard on your left and then Maglio Ordonez on your right kind of a welcome back Cotter look by Maglio Elliard swung at that pitch like it was a hit and run. Well, it did. He did because he looked at Encarnacion after he swung at the ball. Watch him look this way toward Encarnacion saying, weren't you supposed to be going then? One ball, two strikes. Verlander has struck out five. One on, one out. Breaking ball stays up a little. Two and two. Got under that one. Belliard grounded out his first time, and I am surprised that they've got Verlander, the 23 year old, so worried about Encarnacion over at first. Breaking ball is tipped foul. All that stuff is called by the bench, whether it's the Tigers or the Cardinals. 
That's not Verlander stepping off or holding the ball longer than usual on his own. That's called by Rodriguez, his catcher, after checking with the dugout. Two two. Two out. Strikeout number six. Verlander has been impressive with three pitches. The key pitch, the home run on the fastball hit by Pujols, but the changeup gets Belliard. Strikeout number six for the young right hander. Now Yadier Molina who has been the hitting star so far for the Cardinals in the postseason. Two homers, seven RBIs, singled and scored back in the third inning. And is hitting just under 390 in his last 10 road postseason games. That's chopped foul. Whichever team wins between the Cardinals and the Tigers means that we will crown for the seventh straight year Major League Baseball a different champion. The 0 1. Breaking ball is a good one, 0 2. No other sport can claim that. And plain and simple, that means revenue sharing is working. At least helping. Yeah. Spread the wealth. 0 2 pitch. Seven strikeouts for Verlander, and the rookie struck out the side. Bottom of the fourth inning. 4 to 1, St. Louis. We welcome you back to Detroit. It's World Series game number one. In the heart of the order for the Tigers down by three. Ordonez goes after the first pitch, flies it into center for Jim Edmonds. One pitch, one out. Tony Larusa gave us a little visit during the last break. Manager of the Cardinals. First of all, Scott Rowland, he took a high fastball and dumped it over the wall in left field. That has to give you guys some excitement down in the dugout just because of the pitch alone. Well, that and the way he finished up the uh, series before, and this at bat here, he had a couple of great swings, just an outstanding 2 2 changeup. But uh, we get him going, it helps a lot. Yeah, it really uh, helps out your situation, and it, it points to what will or won't be done with Albert Pujols. Were you surprised with first base open that the Tigers went ahead and pitched to Pujols when he homered? Well, I, I know that the Tigers have great respect for Jim Edmonds. I mean, they've, they've seen him be a big timer, and. Uh, and I, that's one of our, our pluses because if you don't want Albert, Jimmy's got a chance to get you. Let's talk real quick about Albert Pujols. Some said he was pressing during the NLCS. He had the home run. He had one RBI. That has to get him going a little bit and get the weight off his shoulders. Son. Well, you know, we looked at Joe. They, we didn't give him a lot of RBI chances. And uh, I mean, his average was still, you know, good. So, I mean, Albert's Albert, and, and uh, he's going to be fine. All right, Tony, thanks for your time. To back up with numbers, would. LaRusso was talking about Pujol stepped to the plate in the first inning tonight with a 324 average this postseason. A lot of that damage done against San Diego. But in the NLCS, only five times did he come up with runners in scoring position against the Mets, and he walked three of those five times. Now, I think it's worth pointing out, too, that Pujols hit the first pitch. He hit a pitch before he gave the Tigers a chance to pitch around him or to rethink their position. So the fact that the first fastball was what he was looking for was, I guess, doubly lethal from a Tiger standpoint. First pitch, home run right field. That made it 4-1. to one. It's still 4-1. to one. And Guillen, who has the only Tiger RBI with a base hit with two out in the first, to score Monroe. Waits for another and strikes out. You want to call it swinging or looking, you can take your pick, and that's strikeout number two for Anthony Reyes, who all of a sudden has retired nine in a row. 
and Guillen caught in between. We talked about the two-seam fastball earlier. That's what that was. Usually, if you see a pitch away from a left-handed batter, from a right-handed pitcher, it's a two-seam fastball. Ball going away, and Guillen caught looking. Yvonne Rodriguez hit a soft line drive for an out with second and third, two out in the first inning. And gets this one off the end of the bat into right center field at Canacion. And all of a sudden, you look at the numbers, and Reyes has outpitched Verlander. Four to one, Cardinals after four. Back after this from your local Fox station. This game skips into the fifth inning. So Taguchi, the number nine hitter. Then Eckstein and the D.H. Duncan for St. Louis up by three. Verlander pours a fastball in for strike one. He has struck out seven, walked one. He had the bad inning in the third. When he allowed three runs on three hits, capped on the home run by Pujols. 0-2 on Taguchi, who's 0-1. for 1. time Taguchi's been retired this postseason now four out of five when he hit a tapper and was thrown out by Rodriguez his first time now he is 0 for 2. Our game summary is brought to you by Verizon Wireless. Scott Rowland tied the game at one with a home run back in the second. And then the Cardinals went to work and there's the Pujols home run the opposite way. Matchup of Verlander, a 17 game winner against Anthony Reyes, a five game winner. The Red Hot Tigers have been cooled to this point. Here's Eckstein, 0 for 2. David is grounded out, struck out, and is now just 8 for 43 this postseason. He is 8 for 44. Two down. Well, Joe, during the National League Championship Series, some of the Cardinals who were not supposed to hit home runs hit home runs. David Eckstein, So Taguchi, Yadier Molina hit two. Even Jeff Supon ran into one. But tonight, the Cardinals who were supposed to hit home runs have hit them. Roland and Pujols. Ball one to Duncan. Duncan had a pinch hit home run. In game five in St. Louis against the Mets. Out in front of that pitch, one ball, one strike. <laughs> Early sledding here in Detroit. <laughs> they have some tomorrow night. One and two on Duncan. Verlander has got his stuff back together. Tigers at the bottom of this inning will have the last three in their lineup. Two and two. Duncan strikes out, and that's eight strikeouts for Verlander. Seven, eight, nine hitters coming up for the Tigers as they trail St. Louis by three. The World Series on Fox is sponsored by Chevy, baseball's number one fan, Chevy. An American Revolution. We just had our chat with Jim Leland, and we'll play that for you when we get the opportunity here in the bottom of the fifth. Meanwhile, the Tiger Bats trying to get it going against Anthony Reyes, who has not surrendered a hit since the first. He's retired 10 straight. When we talked with Jim Leland. It was one of the most candid admissions I have ever heard a manager make during a ball game. Casey struck out his first time. Foul tipped it into the mitt of Molina. And he takes a strike from Reyes. And Reyes has really changed the way he's gone about trying to get outs tonight. He kind of fell in love with that change up in the first inning like he did against the Mets, but he's gone mostly with fastball, curveball, since and has retired 10 in a row. Ties up Casey with the fastball. And it's 0-2. Casey leading off the fifth, rips it down the right field line, foul. You know, it's not as if Reyes is not capable. Anthony Reyes was one and one in May. 
He got recalled and in his first start back in June after being shipped out. He went eight innings, allowed one run on one hit at the Chicago White Sox. A Jim Tomey home run and was a one to nothing loser in the complete game. But for the most part, he has been inconsistent in 2006. Casey hit that ball, but he did. The count's still 0-2. Well, that's that theory. Hit the ball before it hits you. And there you see the number is a 1-2 and two record, but a good ERA and then a real struggle to close out the season. The 0-2 pitch. Out of play. And just to put another log on that fire as you promoted the interview that we did with Jim Leland. You'll find out within the interview why these players love playing for this guy so much. He is an honest person and somebody who does not play games with these big league athletes has the right thing to say going through the clubhouse and changing the culture with the Tigers. Casey is jammed and flies it into right center field for Edmonds. One out and here is Tiger manager Jim Leland. Well, Jim Leland, uh, obviously the question will be here early is uh, first base open. You had Pujols up, two out in the inning. Edmonds coming up, and you guys gave him something to hit, and he didn't miss it with a home run into right. No, that's right. And, you know, I have to take full responsibility for that, but we, we weren't supposed to pitch to him there, and he just tried to get one way outside, and it tailed back over the outer half and hit it out of the ballpark. So, but I, I don't, you know, I, I don't, I'll take the blame for that, but it, it wasn't Justin's fault, but obviously we weren't supposed to be pitching to him there. Since that point, Verlander has gotten his stuff back together, and he looks like he's uh, back on top of things. Now, what are you guys trying to do against Reyes? What have you seen well, him I think do? They've done a good job of kind of starting away and then getting guys out late uh, with the ball inside. Then they've jammed Polanco a couple times. They jammed Pudge once. So, you know, they, they, they have a pretty good plan, and he's been executing pretty good so far. I want to go back real quick, and then we'll let you go. There aren't a lot of guys who would admit and take full responsibility for that pitch that Verlander threw. Is there some thinking there, because some of these guys are young, that you want to make that good 0-2 type pitch, but in certain situations you need to make the decision for them? Yeah, that's probably right. Uh, you know, we talked about that earlier. We talked about in situations that really hurt us, we weren't going to give him anything at all. And that's why I say I'll take full responsibility. Uh, you know, got him out his first time off. We felt that Albert was a little anxious coming in, and we th thought if we threw some pitches off the plate, we might be able to get him out, but obviously uh, it didn't work. Jim, good luck, and thanks for your time. Thank you. Jim Leland, the Tiger manager. Meanwhile, the count's gone to 2-2 two and two now on him, and he gets a piece of it. One out, nobody on. Santiago, the number nine hitter on deck. I'll tell you, Joe, that is as naked a candor as I have heard. I mean, you don't hear comments like that from a manager after a game, much less do it during a game. You can disagree with him pitching the pool holes, but you can't disagree with his honesty. Here is a 2-2 pitch from Reyes and another foul. Inge is a guy who over the last five years, his power numbers have been getting better and better year to year. Former catcher. Now a third baseman, a guy who made a lot of errors during the regular season, 22, but his teammates will tell you it's because his range is so good. He gets to so many balls, he makes more errors at changeup, strikes out Inge, and that's the third strikeout for Anthony Reyes, two out here in the fifth. That's the changeup after so many fastballs. So Reyes hurt by the changeup in the first inning, has changed his style his delivery and his pitch selection and has retired 12 straight Tigers on Santiago now two out nobody on Santiago <laughs> takes a strike the base is empty Santiago who hit 25 and 80 at bats during the regular season and who was getting the start tonight at short. Very good defensive shortstop. Well, Guillen plays at first and Casey is the DH. 1-1 one, one pitch. 1-2. One Cardinals had the day off yesterday so they've got a bullpen guys with fresh arms. Reyes tries to turn in five very good innings.
Young pitcher who irons the bill of his cap delivers the pitch, and that's a foul ball down the left field line by Santiago. You know, in my experience, in 48 years, I have never known a player to iron the bill of his cap. But Anthony Reyes does, and that's why it is so straight across from ear to ear. Two out, nobody on, a one-two pitch. Two and two. Now the fun thing about Anthony Reyes, who turned 25 last Monday, is that he wears his socks high and irons the bill of his cap. Both of those are unusual in today's age. Two, two pitch, another strikeout, back-to-back -back strikeouts. For Anthony Reyes, four on the night, 13 straight retired. Heart of the order coming up for the Cardinals up three. The brewery in downtown St. Louis is Albert Pujols leads off and takes a change up high. It'll be Pujols, Edmonds, and Roland. Two of the three of Homer tonight. Albert, a two-run shot the opposite way in the third inning, made it four to one. Good breaking ball for a strike, one and one. It's in the 40s here now in Detroit. And a little high heat on this 40-plus degree night for Pujols, two and one. There are the numbers, 84 pitches so far and eight strikeouts against one walk. But four runs on four hits. And now a 3-1 count. Off the end of the bat. Jim Leland had started each of the first two series, both the Yankee series and then the A series with Robertson on the mound. Had the Mets won two nights ago, he would have started this series with the left-hander on the mound. Instead, it's Verlander, and the rookie right-hander has issued his second walk of the night. For the leadoff hitter, Pujols, our HB player personality is Justin Verlander. Childhood idol, Nolan Ryan. Nolan would be proud. His favorite TV show, Saved by the Bell, Screech would be proud. His hobby, playing golf in the offseason. And if not a baseball player, he would like to be an astronaut. HP, the computer is personal again. Here's Edmonds. One on, nobody out. Edmonds takes a ball up and in. Between Zach and Screech and Mr. Belding, Tim, who would you say is probably the most complex character on Saved by the Bell? <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. The 1-0 pitch, down and in, 2-0. I thought it was interesting in that player profile that he wanted to be an astronaut. I have I have never encountered a player who wanted to be an astronaut. Have you encountered any astronauts who wanted to be players? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I've read about them. 2-0 now is the count as both Guillen and Rodriguez go out to talk to Verlander. A walk and now a 2-0 count. Tigers cannot afford to fall any further behind. Folks may, may be thinking, well, why did he pitch to Pujols to lead off the inning when he pitched to him the last time? Well, obviously, a totally different situation. The last time first base was open, there were two outs, a man on second, this time leading off the inning. Edmonds tried to hold up. He did, according to Mike Winters, and it's 3-0. and Looks like the Cardinals got a break there. Did Edmonds go too far? I thought so. I did, too. But it's called ball three, and the count's three and zero. Oh. You saw Grilly and Walker getting loose for the Tigers in their bullpen. Three zero -oh pitch is a strike. Three and one. On deck is Roland, who was homered and struck out. Sixth inning of Game One, and a four to one St. Louis lead. And the throw gets away from Guillen. Rattles around by the tarp, and Albert Pujols is going to end up on third base. So now Verlander compounds his problems by throwing wildly over to first. It'll be an error, and 
and the Cardinals have a runner at third with nobody out. Yeah, that is a fruitless throw to second base and very careless. There's no way Albert Pujols is going anywhere. Number one, he's got a bad hamstring. It looks improved in going to third base and standing up, but he's going nowhere unless it's to be protected by a hitter. And I doubt that Tony La Russa would send him because Edmonds swings through too many pitches. What a grimace by Pujols. Tim mentioned the bad hamstring, and he turned it on to get to third there. Three and one now is the count on the Cardinal center fielder trying to make it a four-run lead. Full count. The hamstring is bad enough, according to Tony La Russa, that in certain cases he might think about a pinch runner. That hasn't happened so far in the postseason. All things considered, Pujols looked okay going first to third on that error by Verlander. And field is in. Edmund stays alive. This is where Verlander, who has struck out eight, needs number nine. Pujols getting around the bases after the underthrow at first base, looking over his right shoulder and making it to third without a play, and then the grimace. But he was running better then. Edmonds with a base hit into right field, and it's 5-1 to one St. Louis here in the sixth. That pitch was up from Verlander, and Edmonds jumped on it. He likes the ball up. A walk, an error, and a run on a base hit by Edmonds. Well, you can see that ball about belt high and belted to right by Edmonds. Edmonds has driven in seven now this postseason. He had struck out in his two previous at bats. Cardinals have their biggest lead, five to one. Roland goes hacking at the first pitch and fouls it, strike one. Again, LaRusso talking about an article that had been faxed to him by a friend, a USA Today article that had the Tigers being picked to win this World Series in three games. Roland hits it in the air to right, tailing away from Ordonez. That ball is a fair ball, and it is a double as it bounces out of play. Edmonds will have to hold it third, and the Cardinals have a chance to blow this thing wide open. And that's going to be all for Justin Verlander. That ball up again. Roland has hit a home run up, and now a double down the right field line that has been up, and that's good news for the Cardinals. The other part of that article that LaRusso quoted was as long as the Tigers could keep from laughing in this matchup. They're not laughing now, down five to one with second and third, nobody out. First pitch to Encarnacion from Jason Grilly misses down and away ball one. Second and third, nobody out. St. Louis up five to one here in the sixth inning. And there are the numbers for the regular season from Jason Grilly. One of the long relievers for Jim Leland. Infield is in, and Carnacion is jammed, and he fouls in one ball, one strike. Jason Grilly glad that the Detroit Tigers did not retire the number 49, because that's the number worn by his father in 75, 1976, and 1977 for part of a year. So here, Jason Grilly wearing number 49 some 30 years after his dad did the old ballpark, Tiger Stadium which is still standing, but not housing the Tigers, of course. It will be raised next summer. A 1-1 pitch. High fastball by the bat of Encarnacion, strike two. Good fastball out of the strike zone from Grilly. Encarnacion has not had a good postseason. 8 of 37 with five strikeouts, four RBIs, no home runs. Moved down in the order to the number six spot. 
by La Russa. Here's a 1 2 pitch. Remember in game seven of the NLCS, La Russa moved Molina up one spot to the seventh position. And he hit the game winning home run in the ninth inning. Molina's back in the number eight spot tonight in game one of the World Series, but Roland moved up to the number five spot. Roland has homered and doubled. A 2 2 pitch. To the third baseman, Inch has it come up on him, throw a home wild. In to score is Edmonds. And they're going to say that Roland was obstructed by Inch. I believe Roland ran into Inch. The third base umpire was pointing. And Jim Leland's going to go get an, an explanation from Mike Winters. Well, I'll tell you, it's unusual to send the runner with second and third going on contact with nobody out. Inch the ball off of Inch. Now he wanders in the third the third base area and that's where Scott Rowland became involved and home plate umpire called it immediately Randy Marsh said Rowland is allowed home plate because Inge interfered with Scott rounding third so Edmund scores on the bad throw by Inge and now Rowland runs into Inge a very eventful play by Brandon Inge Rodriguez made the tag, but Roland awarded home plate. And remember, every time that Roland hits the ground, as he does there, the interference by the third baseman, Inge, the Cardinals wonder about that left shoulder. He went down hard, popped right back up, was awarded home plate. It's a 7-1 to one game. Still nobody out. And Encarnacion, who hit that chopper to third, is at second. With one out, you always send the runner. And Tony La Russa taking a chance with nobody out. Roland runs into Inge, but actually Roland hitting Inge with his shoulder and then the ground with his shoulder and Pujols calling the interference. An accurate call by the home plate umpire Randy Marsh. Now Belliard chops it back to Grilly and Carnacion holds it second one out. Third base umpire Mike Winters also was on top of it pointing at the play the entire way after the interference and when Roland went down and popped back up. He was awarding the Cardinals the seventh run of the night. Here it is one more time. It's a bad hop to Inge coming up right there. He still comes home, throws it toward the first base side, and in the background you can see Roland running into Inge. Interference is called and the Cardinals score another one. Now Yadier Molina with Encarnacion at second and one out. Molina takes a strike. Runner at second with one out. The 0-1. Molina takes low. All seven runs are charged to Verlander in five-plus innings. Six hits. Two walks, eight strikeouts, two home runs allowed. Because the Cardinals beat the Mets, Verlander got the game one start, and it did not work for the Tigers. Go back to second, and Encarnacion, who started his career with the Tigers, back ahead of the tag by Polanco. Meanwhile, the other side, the guy who certainly wasn't the pitcher top build in this matchup is Anthony Reyes and what he's done through five innings. He's not allowed a hit since the first. Tired 13 straight. That really is bothered by Encarnacion out at second base. They must know something about Encarnacion that the Cardinals don't. Because when Encarnacion's been at first, Verlander threw over about six times. Now Grilly's thrown back to second. A 1-1. Two and one. Also, the Albert Pujols throw to first base. That, that's what started the unraveling of this inning. Really no need for Verlander to go to first. But Pujols going to third, and this has been a, a an inning in which the Cardinals have run the bases very aggressively to add to their lead. Two balls and a strike on Molina. 
Cardinals leading by six in the sixth. And Molina flies one into center for Granderson. Out number two. And the number nine hitter, so Taguchi will walk to the plate. Tomorrow, Fox NFL Sunday returns with a doubleheader as the Carolina Panthers travel to Cincinnati to try and stop Carson Palmer and the Bengals. Then Clinton Portis and the Redskins battle Peyton Manning and the Colts or other regional action. It all begins tomorrow with America's number one pregame show at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Here on Fox. 5 0 Colts and the Redskins need to win badly. They will have their hands full. Brunel remains the quarterback for the Redskins. With two out, Taguchi pops it up. Right in front of home plate for Ivan Rodriguez, and Pudge puts it away, but the Cardinals come up with three. It's a 7-1 to one St. Louis lead. Top of the order for the Tigers. Granderson, Monroe, Polanco. If anybody gets on, Maglio Ordonez. And Anthony Reyes, who gave up the first run of the night, has been in shutdown mode ever since. He's retired 13 straight. And he and the Cardinals lead by six. Fernando Rodney getting loose for the Tigers in their pen. 1-1 one, one pitch. Granderson pops it up. Straight up on the infield, and Roland will try to find it and catch it. One out. The Chevy Silverado winning number is 4-4-902-088. 4-4-902-088. Get in the game at worldseries.com slash Fox Sports for your chance to win the all-new 2007 Chevy Silverado tomorrow night. WorldSeries.com slash Fox Sports. Win a Chevy Silverado tomorrow night. Here is Monroe. And he takes low ball one. Joe, you talked about the obstruction of Brandon Inge, the third baseman, and we'll read from the rule book what obstruction is. I said interference. I was wrong. It is obstruction. Here's another pop-up. Off the bat of Monroe, and Pujols with the runner right there has it in foul ground, two out. And to clarify this, obstruction is the act of a fielder who, while not in possession of the ball and not in the act of fielding the ball, impedes the progress of any runner. It's very, very clear as Inge wanders into foul territory that he obstructed with Scott Rowland. Well, there's a big difference, obstruction primarily from the defender. So it's not interference, but obstruction. Polanco with two out, nobody on, takes a strike. Want to clear that up. And so you know on the play, the official scorer has ruled a fielder's choice in RBI and two errors on Inch. 0-2 oh on Polanco. One on the throw, one on the obstruction. So there were three errors in that inning. The other one belonging to Verlander on the wild throw to first. Anthony Reyes could not be turning in a better game. Two out, nobody on. 0-2 pitch in the bottom of the sixth. Hit on one hop to Exton. Anthony Reyes has turned in a gem to this point. We go to the seventh inning of game one. Cardinals up by six. Back after this from your local Fox station. A little after 10 o'clock in the east, this game moves into the seventh at Comerica Park. Game one, seven to one, St. Louis on top. They've out hit the Tigers 6-2. And there is our former partner. It didn't last long enough as far as we're concerned. Luis Gonzalez on the right, his son Jacob on the left. We didn't get a chance on the air two nights ago at the end of the NLCS to say goodbye the proper way to Luis Gonzalez, who was a great teammate. You can see why there is so much respect for him in the two clubhouses that we walked into with him by our side. Players love him. And very respected professional athlete. Here's Fernando Rodney, who takes over. He gets two quick strikes on Eckstein, who's 0 for 3. Tough travel schedule for Gonzo, too. He went back to Arizona, his home, and then flew to Detroit this morning. And will go back to Arizona tomorrow and take the triplets to Disneyland. Axtine golfs one into shallow center, and Polanco and Santiago come together. It's Polanco with a play. 
Let's check in with Ken Rosenthal. Joe, as first reported by the New York Times, Major League Baseball and the Players Union are very close to a new labor agreement. The length of the deal, according to a source with knowledge of the talks, will be five years, the longest in baseball history. It will give the sport 16 consecutive years of labor peace. The deal is expected to be announced before the end of the World Series, nearly two months before the current agreement was set to expire. Guys? All right, well, that, that is great news, and it's so different than what we're used to hearing. The last one came down extensions, trying to get something done at the very end. Right. Here's Chris Duncan. He takes a strike from Rodney, who throws very hard. And what they've done this time around, which was a stroke of genius, I can't believe they actually pulled it off because there's so many leaks that are possibilities. But they've done all of this away from the public spotlight. And they've gotten all their work done off to the side. And now, according to the reports, and as we hear from Ken, they're going to pop up here before the end of the World Series and announce a new labor agreement between the Players Association and management, which is great. 1-1 one, one pitch is a strike on Duncan. It's 1-2. and two. Taking a lot of the public pressures out of it and a lot of the ego out of it. They can just hammer out a deal, which they are completing, I guess, as we speak. Here is Duncan, who's one for three, an RBI double and a run scored. One out in the seventh inning. Duncan got a good rip. Still one and two. The Tigers in the bottom of the seventh will have Ordonez, Guillen, and Rodriguez. Alfredo Ledesma getting loose, and a good pitch from Rodney gets Duncan two out. Tomorrow night, after a long day of football on Fox, it will be World Series game number two. Cardinals and Tigers will be on the air at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, in a matchup of the former Detroit Tiger against the current Kenny Rogers, and the 41-year-old has thrown 15 scoreless innings. This postseason, he's 2 0. And the reason Justin Verlander started tonight was so Jim Leland could start Kenny Rogers in games two and six here in Detroit. Of course, <laughs> if it goes that far. Rodney deals a strike to Albert Pujols. Weaver came up with the Tiger organization, and Todd Jones was quoted in the paper today. Todd is the closer for Detroit, saying there's no love lost between a lot of his teammates and Jeff Weaver who will get the ball tomorrow night, and he has been outstanding this postseason for the Cardinals. Big reason why they are in the World Series for his one start against the Padres and two very good ones against the Mets in the NLCS. Todd Jones saying that Jeff Weaver has grown up a lot since those days, and Todd saying, so have I. Here's a 1-1. Pujol slashes it foul, strike two. Spitting his gum out of his mouth and trying to hit it on its way down to the ground with his bat. You know who used to do that? Billy Williams of the Chicago Cubs. And he never missed the gum. Ever. Hall of Famer, Billy Williams. One ball, two strikes. And a line drive into center field. Well hit. Granderson back to grab it. A one, two, three first inning of work. For Fernando Rodney. World Series game number one continues into the bottom of the seventh inning. Maglio Ordonez first up. And he takes a strike from Anthony Reyes. Ordonez, Guillen, and Ivan Rodriguez. Ordonez is 0 for 1 for the walk. Trying to get something, anything started for Detroit. Against Reyes, who has not surrendered, not just a hit, but the Tigers have not had a base runner since the first inning. A little flare out behind first, and Pujols makes a circus catch. Pirouetting out into shallow right field, and 
bad hamstring at all. He was there to stab it. Acrobatically, Pujols going back, turning the wrong way, and then continuing that carousel to make the play. You talk about an adjustment. We talk about it all the time, how pitchers have to make adjustments, how hitters have to make adjustments. Anthony Reyes and Yadier Molina have made the adjustment from the first inning through the next six and a third. They have just been terrific going more with the fastball, the breaking ball, and just ditching that straight change for the most part. Josh Kenny and Tyler Johnson getting loose. I think you could spend an inning talking about these two pitching coaches for Detroit. Chuck Hernandez spent nine years with Tampa Bay. Here's a ground ball to the right side, and Belliard can't get to it. And the Tigers have their first base runner since the first. The Tigers were number one in baseball in team ERA for the first time in franchise history. As Belliard got a glove on it, couldn't make the play. And the Cardinals, down the stretch and within this postseason, Tim, have reinvented their bullpen. And the starting pitching they've received, now with Reyes also on the list, has come out of nowhere. Chris Carpenter, Jeff Supon, and Jeff Weaver, 10 of the 11 starts coming into this game. And now Anthony Reyes, with this start tonight, has got to make Dave Duncan very, very happy. One on, one out. Yvonne Rodriguez at the plate. He has lined out twice. Once to second, once to right. So he's gone the other way in each of his two at bats, and he takes a strike. Dave Duncan, the Cardinal pitching coach. Field to Gucci back at the track at the wall for out number two. Rodriguez just missed that pitch. Hit it as far as he could without hitting it out. Two out. Here's the adjustment we were talking about in the first inning the double by Monroe and then the single by Guillen, both on changeups. And then Molina and Reyes going back to the fastball. To hold the Tigers scoreless here with two outs in the seventh inning. The only base runner, Carlos Guillen, at first right now. Casey is at the plate 0 for 2. He has struck out, fly to center. And he is fooled on that pitch down and in from Reyes, a rare breaking ball from the Cardinal right-hander. We saw only that one out pitch changeup, which was to Brandon Inge for the strikeout in the fifth. It's been heavier with a fastball than it was at the start or it was in his start against the Mets in game four. One ball, one strike on Casey. Well, we talked about Reyes and what a developing pitcher he is and a developing story tonight is once again how he has changed from the first inning on. All these Tiger fans want a reason to cheer here in the seventh. Casey pops it up. Belliard waits for it. And the inning comes to a close. We have played seven innings here in game one. Anthony Reyes is dealing in the Cardinals lead seven to one. Major League Baseball is proud to be associated with the Boys and Girls Clubs of America as this game number one progresses into the eighth. Together they are creating a positive place for kids and Edmonds takes a strike from the new hurler fourth of the night Wilfredo Ledesma who is as Jim Leland put it before the game a work in progress but a guy who has got a sensational arm dealing with Edmonds he misses high one ball one strike Edmonds then Roland then Encarnacion for the Cardinals who lead by six. Eighth inning, and the crowd has been taken out of it. The pitching of Anthony Reyes. Edmonds couldn't lay off, and it's one and two.
World Series has not been here since 1984 when the Tigers beat the Padres. Edmonds out of the way of that pitch up and in two and two. Just got a piece of it. Detroit Tigers facing the New York Yankees in New York. They lost game one of the division series. Since that time, they have won seven in a row. They were underdogs to the Yankees, heavy underdogs. They were underdogs to the Athletics. But favorites here against the Cardinals. That misses outside, full count on Edmonds. So the last world championship for Detroit, 1984 for the Cardinals. It's been even longer, 1982. They've lost three straight World Series since in 85, 87, and 2004. Here's Edmonds with another hit, and again on a pitch that was up. An RBI single his last time up. Later a run scored, and now a leadoff hit here in the eighth. Monday night on Fox, Prison Break returns all new at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, followed by the thrilling new drama, Justice, on its new night at 9 Eastern, 8 Central. It all starts Monday night on Fox. Viewer discretion is advised. Leadoff man is on, and Roland has had a big night. A homer to tie it in the second. A double to help the sixth inning his last time up. Ball one up and in. So with this long layoff, six full days of rest, Jim Leland has taken this opportunity to get some guys out of his bullpen back into game action. It's been an even longer layoff for his DH tonight, Sean Casey. There's a strike. Casey has struggled. He struck out, fly to center, and popped up. Talking to Tony La Russa about the public dispute between him and Scott Rowland. Not, if not a dispute, certainly a disagreement. And, and Tony's saying, look, it's soap opera stuff. Enough already. And it, and it gets you to thinking that it's, as Zach Miner is warming, that it's pure folly for anybody to think that managers' decisions concerning players are, are always agreed with by the player. I mean, it affects the players. That's why most players don't agree with managers' decisions. Roland pops it up on the infield for the shortstop, Santiago, one on, one out. So if Tony La Russa doesn't play Scott Roland in a game during the National League Championship Series, and Roland gets upset. He's going to get upset. Other players get upset also. Then LaRusa followed it up by saying, Look, it's not like I'm not rooting for him. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm his biggest fan. Yeah. I want him to go out and have a big game here in game one, and he has. Home run and a double. Put him in that number five spot behind Edmonds. Edmonds has had two hits, Roland has two hits. Here's Encarnacion, who has an RBI, but is hitless 0 for 2 with a walk. Managing a lot tougher nowadays because it, it has to be explained to the players, to the press. Whereas 30 or 35 years ago, a manager's decision would be told to the player. He said, the reason I made it is I'm the manager. And that was it. Nobody talked back. Nobody went to the press. But now it's different and in many, many ways, much more difficult to manage in the major leagues today. And Carnacion is trying to find his swing. Chops one to third for in. Throw to second for the out, two away. Tony La Russa had this to say with Belliard walking in about playing injured players. You really want to balance the gamers that, uh, that want to go out there. Soreness is part of it. Hurt is not. 
So what you really need to do is you need guys to be forthright and, and, and help you with the decision. You know, and, and as a manager or as a coach, you want to you want to you want to know that they're seventy five percent. Then you make a judgment that their seventy five percent is better than somebody off the bench. Little fly ball into right field, and that is well put by Tony Larusa, who is dealing with that day after day, especially down the stretch for the Cardinals. Bottom of the eighth inning. Tigers coming up, down by six. Well, the unexpected has happened again as this postseason takes another wild turn. Anthony Reyes has lasted until the eighth inning. He has pitched brilliantly, allowing one run on three hits. And he and the Cardinals lead game one here in Detroit against the Red Hot Tigers, winners of seven straight this postseason, seven to one. And the count's 0 2 on Brandon Inge. We open this game talking about Anthony Reyes perhaps tipping his pitches to Met hitters when Carlos Beltran and David Wright homered against him when he started in the NLCS. He's not tipping anything tonight. Pretty good pitch there, called ball one, and Todd Jones, the closer for the Tigers, getting loose. Inge flies it into right and Carnacion back on the track one away when you Retired 17 straight earlier in this game. It's the longest streak in a World Series game since Jose Rio retired 20 in a row back in 1990 for Cincinnati in the clinching game four against Tony LaRusso's Oakland A's. Rio was the MVP of that series. And now Reyes retired 17 straight here tonight. One out, nobody on, and it's Tim's. Pinch hitting, popping it up. Eckstein has it two out. In 1990, the manager of the team that swept Tony LaRusso was Lou Pinella. And our congratulations on earning the managerial job for the Chicago Cubs. And Lou hoping he could turn that franchise around. See that? Reggie Bush will be in the studio. Tomorrow on Fox NFL Sunday, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, before a doubleheader day of football. Here's Granderson popping it up into left field. Reyes has gone eight. Might finish what he started here tonight in game one. The rookie for the Cardinals has carried with him a 7-1 to one lead. Let's go to the ninth. You can watch baseball like you never have before. The best picture on TV, direct TV. Yadier Molina first up for the Cardinals ninth inning. His biggest contribution tonight has been receiving Anthony Reyes. He does have a hit. But the rookie right-hander Reyes will go back out to work, you would imagine. The bottom of this ninth inning, he has been dominant since the first inning. Nafi Perez is in the game at short. Todd Jones is the new pitcher for the Tigers. And the closer for Detroit is up on the count 0 2. Todd Jones was very, very funny when he was talking about Joel Zamaya and others in the bullpen. Brandon Inge retires Molina. Zamaya and the left-hander Jamie Walker warming for Detroit. But Todd saying that by the time they get to me, uh, hitters are happy. They've seen Zamaya and the likes of the other bullpenners for Detroit. Of course, that's self-deprecating humor and not true because Todd Jones had a terrific year in his return to the Tigers. The franchise leader in saves as you look at Anthony Reyes, who just turned 25 and is a rookie. That 
is off the leg of Todd Jones and will be a base hit. So Taguchi has his first hit. Now one out of four tonight. This four to see moment presented by Sharp Aquas Liquid Crystal Television. The opposite field home run by Albert Pujols back in the third inning. First base open. Runner at second, two out. First pitch from Verlander was too good. It ran back over the outside part of the plate. Jim Leland, we heard earlier in the game, taking the blame for it instead of just putting him on. And Pujols hit the two-run shot to make it four to one. It's now seven to one. And the hitless David Eckstein takes a strike from Todd Jones. He started to say Jones is the franchise leader in saves. And you know, he can laugh about his stuff. He only had 28 strikeouts during the year, but it is unique to find a guy who does not melt in pressure situations and has no problem getting the final three outs. Nafi Perez makes the play, safe at first. Great effort by Nafi Perez, two out. And almost an unbelievable double play. It's amazing how the baseball has a way of finding you when you come in for defense in the late innings. Nafi Perez, what a terrific play. Not only with the catch, but the little shovel backhand, and then Polanco, Polanco barehanding the ball, and his throw to first base, not in time. So the guy who specializes, might have been out, the guy who specializes in getting those final three outs gets two here in the ninth inning. Will be lifted for another reliever. Walker with Duncan coming up. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Here's Jamie Walker, and the Cardinals make a switch instead of Chris Duncan. Preston Wilson will get his first series at bat. Walker, the lefty, on at first is Eckstein, and Preston Wilson tried to hold up, couldn't strike one. 263 average, 17 home runs during the regular season with his season split between the Astros and the Cardinals. Cut loose by Houston, picked up by their rival. St. Louis Cardinals that sports away and down to second base is Eckstein on a wild pitch. Jamie Walker throwing the change up in the dirt. Rodriguez tries to block it but it goes off to the side. What catchers try to do in that situation is to keep the ball out in front. That usually stops the runner. But when the runner sees it go to the left or right that's when they take the extra base. Here's a 1-1 pitch. Wilson fooled again. One and two. Preston ready to swing, but the ball wasn't there yet. In the bottom of this ninth inning, it'll be the two, three, and four hitters, Monroe, Polanco, and Ordonez. A one-two. Missing off the inside corner. Pujols on deck. He has one important hit tonight. Preston Wilson trying to add to a six-run St. Louis lead. It's foul. There is nobody getting loose for the Cardinals in their bullpen. It is quiet. Also, no one uh, warming up for Detroit, and the reason for that is... Wilson gets on to probably walk Pujols. Or if Wilson drives in a run with Edmonds in the hole. That is down and in. Wilson checked his swing. And it's a full count with Pujols next. I might reconsider that because if Wilson walks, they're not going to walk Pujols, but he'll be, he'll be facing the left-hander, Walker. Wilson strikes out, and that ends the inning. 
we go into the bottom of the ninth for the Tigers as they trail by six. Monroe, Polanco, and Ordonez. Seven to one St. Louis in game one. Here in Detroit, the Cardinals are back on the field, and we're in the bottom of the ninth inning, game one of the World Series, and consider what's happened here tonight. Most people believe that Reyes was in the category of the sacrificial lamb here, somebody to go out and just occupy the start because the NLCS went seven games and Supon was not available. Well, Anthony Reyes, with Braden Looper getting loose behind him, Anthony Reyes has turned in eight innings, allowing one run on three hits. Cardinals trying to take game one here in Detroit against a team that had won seven straight this postseason with a guy who had fizzled down the stretch and was so-so, and that is a bomb in the left field off the bat of Monroe to make it a 7-2 game. We'll see if that's the last pitch of the night for Anthony Reyes. Off go the fountains in center field, and it's a five-run St. Louis lead. be all for Anthony Reyes who does not get the complete game tonight it's up to the Cardinal bullpen now to try to hang on to what is a 7 to 2 lead as Monroe hits his fourth home run of this postseason Anthony Reyes will exit what a job tonight by the Cardinal rookie right hander 7 to 2 St. Louis Anthony Reyes was trying to join this list of complete games by rookies in game one of a World Series. Babe Adams for the Pirates, Don Newcomb and Joe Black for the Dodgers in 49 and 52. 93 pitches. That should say eight plus innings. Two runs on four hits. Reyes did not get an out here in the ninth inning. That means that Braden Looper has to get three outs and there's more activity for the Cardinals in their bullpen as Polanco the MVP of the ALCS takes a strike Alec Johnson the left-hander cranking it up Polanco tonight 0 for 3 to the right side for Belliard one away after Anthony Reyes got into the dugout pop Warner one of the minor league managers came over to congratulate him and then Jeff Supon Gary Bennett the backup catcher had words for him Supon was the MVP of the National League Championship Series and Reyes ought to be one extremely proud young right hander well I should say so what a job breaking ball fouled off the end of the bat by Ordonez strike one following Reyes Jeff Weaver tomorrow and then the Travel day scheduled for Monday, and then Chris Carpenter goes for the Cardinals, followed by Jeff Supon. This has a much different look to this World Series if this score holds and the Cardinals take game one behind Anthony Reyes, which nobody expected. In your MasterCard keys to the game, you talk about the Cardinals obviously wanting to win two here in Detroit, but hoping to win one before this series goes to St. Louis and they're two outs away from that. And the key for the game as far as Detroit was concerned is is and was will the layoff hurt them and I know uh, people are going to say that that's what Jim Leland was saying before the game he said if we lose tonight or if we don't score a lot of runs or look good against Reyes it'll be written tomorrow and be talked about on all the call in shows that uh, the layoff hurt us. He said if we win, everybody will say we were well rested. One ball, two strikes, one out, nobody on. Looper dealing with Ordonia. Ball two. If the Cardinals win this game, Tony LaRusso will snap a personal eight-game losing streak in World Series play. 
sweep with the Cardinals in 04 by the Red Sox and the sweep we talked about earlier back in 1990 by the Reds over his A's. Now the count's full three and two. That year, uh, 1990, was a year later after the Oakland Athletics had swept the San Francisco Giants in the Earthquake World Series in 1989. So Tony's been on all sides of sweeps in World Series play. Ordonia is trying to get on and start something here in the ninth inning. Craig Monroe hit a towering home run Ooh. to make it seven to two here in the ninth. And now a strikeout of Ordonia is two away. The beauty of a five run lead is you could throw a predictable pitch at fastball blown by Ordonia's. So now two out, nobody on. And the Cardinals are hoping for one more out to break a team eight game road losing streak during the World Series. Looper, who has a ring from his days with the Marlins back in 2003. Trying to get the final out and missing with ball one up and into Carlos Guillen. Seven to two here in the ninth inning with two out and nobody on. Ian has an RBI tonight with a single back in the first inning. Cardinals went down in order in their half of the first. The Tigers came up with a run. At second and third, two out, and Yvonne Rodriguez hit a soft line drive caught by Belliard at second. Cardinals tied it on the holo, solo home run by Roland in the second. And got three in the third, three in the sixth. Looper's 1-1, one, 2-1. One, And two out of three tonight. That was against Reyes. Now a 2 2 count. Verlander and Reyes, the starters tonight. Tomorrow night, Weaver and Kenny Rogers. Rodgers 2-0 this postseason, 15 scoreless innings. One start against the Yankees, one start against the A's, and Weaver, a record of 5-4 and four during the regular season for the Cardinals, but very good in the postseason against the Padres and then the Mets. A 2-2, full -two. Cool count. Two teams played an interleague series here in Detroit in June, and the Tigers swept. A three game set, the 23rd, 24th, and 25th of June. Verlander got that sweep started with a win, beating Carpenter. A bobble, and Roland throws late. That'll be his third error of this postseason. That ball hit by a left-handed batter squirts on a third baseman going toward the line. And Scott could not center that ball and makes, as Joe said, his third error of the postseason. The Tigers made three errors back in that three-run sixth inning that the Cardinals put up. One by Verlander and then two on the same play by Inch. The third baseman. Here's Rodriguez. Pudge takes a strike. This guy is a natural born leader. Von Rodriguez for the work he does behind the plate in the clubhouse. 
Tim Leland has a great room full of guys in Tiger uniforms. Now strike two. Talk about a natural born leader, he's a natural born Hall of Famer too. The talent, the mental prowess. Ball one. Think of all the years that Yvonne Rodriguez has been behind the plate. 310 of those years, 10 of 11. Slide into right, Encarnacion to his left in the corner. He's out of room. I don't know if you caught that fact that we threw up there. The last World Series win in a game for the National League came back in 2003, the clinching game six at Yankee Stadium by the Marlins. That was in 03, then in 04, the Red Sox swept. Last year, it was the White Sox sweeping Houston. Rodriguez hops out of it. Looper has the one he wants and is one two. Slide into center field and that will end game one as Edmonds puts it away. And the Cardinals come in here behind their rookie Anthony Reyes and shock this big crowd and take game one, a final of seven to two. <laughs> two hours, 54 minute game and Anthony Reyes and Braden Looper hold the Detroit Tigers down to four hits. We said it earlier and uh, during the game that Anthony Reyes went to the stretch in his only other start because he the New York Mets could have been reading his pitches. Well, not too many Tigers read his pitches tonight. Superb. So the Cardinals have taken game one and now it'll be a matchup of Jeff Weaver and Kenny Rogers.